Thursday, everyone. You know, I've only been in Florida for two days, and I've already picked up two reverse mortgages. Nice. That's what I call prostitutes. <laughs> oh, my. So uh, let's look at some headlines that I saw today. Uh, Texas school district has changed its rules to require students to use bathrooms that align with their gender assigned at birth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Sounds good. When one student was asked about the ruling, she said, it doesn't affect me either way. I identify as a bear and <laughs> in the woods. Problem. According to projections from the United Nations, the population of the planet has officially hit 8 billion. But don't worry, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot says she's confident she can double the murder rate. <laughs> Southern California is bracing this week for what could be the strongest Santa Ana winds of the year. You know, man, it's a good thing no one in LA lives in a tent. <laughs> Madonna recently posted revealing photos that some are calling inappropriate. In one photo, she was clutching a bag made by Balenciaga and another bag made by Colostomy. <laughs> According... All right. According to a new survey, 40% of consumers say Amazon delivery drivers are the most attractive. In response, jealous UPS workers are promising to show more skin. All right, let's do a monologue. Now, it might get a little weird, so stay with me. But tonight, I want to talk about dogs. As I'm sure many of you know, I recently got a dog of my own. Yeah. I got sick of stealing other people's at the park. His name is Gus, and unlike the cast of The View, he doesn't bite people when he's hungry and is almost potty trained. And unlike Joe Biden, he doesn't mark his territory with urine and can make it upstairs by himself. <laughs> True, Joe is just another mammal that needs to be walked. But since I got Gus, I started to realize something interesting about dogs as they relate to politics. You see, I think dogs are the great unifier, that as much as certain leaders try to tear this country apart, sometimes dogs quietly help keep us together. OK, Pelosi is very divisive, but that's because she's 90% pit bull. But we've been together for 30,000 years. You know, when people were barely clothed and smelled awful. But enough about Seth Rogen. <laughs> so dogs must really like us. Think about it. Dogs might be the one thing people from all sides of the political spectrum can agree on that they love. Well, that and pizza. You know, even communists love dogs, but usually on pizza. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Hey. The truth hurts. <laughs> Remember, during the riots, or as CNN called it, peaceful protests, there was no torching of pet stores. Well, there was one store, but the animals were saved by one dude. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> so why is that? Well, part of it is that pets provide, dogs provide, the perfect companions with none of the baggage. Dogs are easy to understand. They want food, walks, petting. It's like a spouse, minus the complaining. <laughs> and like a spouse, sometimes they bring me a dead bird on my birthday. <laughs> While a friend might talk your ear off about global warming, your corgi is never going to bark at you over the Green New Deal. He might poop on your living room rug, but Jerry Nadler will do both. But some dogs can be interested in politics if given the right mentor. Here's Gus when he hears the start of Tucker's show. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, the frustrating thing about the news media, no matter how horrible they are, is that you need them. You can't understand the world except through the news media. But here's Gus when he hears Brian Kilmeade. <laughs> To be fair to Gus, almost everyone has that reaction when they hear Brian Kilmeade speak, including meth and crack addicts. 
But sure, there are some interesting parallels between dogs and Democrats. We know that dogs, like some Dems, will hump anything if given the chance. <laughs> and yeah, some dogs and some Dems have fleas. And dogs sometimes fart on TV. <laughs> but for the most part, dogs create infinitely more love in this world than they do problems. <laughs> And if you still don't believe me, consider this. Me, Kat, and AOC all have a Frenchie. <laughs> so a righty, a libertarian, and a nutbag lefty all own the same breed. Talk about unity. But damn, do I feel sorry for AOC's mutt. Imagine listening to that bark all day. <laughs> and you constantly have to clean up after her. Ugh. And no offense to cats or cat owners out there, your pets have a lot going for them, too. But crapping in a box in the kitchen ain't one of them. And if you're a professional wrestler that owns some turtles, that's OK, too. Giant turtles would make a great pet for Nancy Pelosi. They both live for hundreds of years. But just remember, the next time you accidentally spill peanut butter, and I'm not sure how you spill peanut butter, but if you do somewhere on your body, your cat won't be there to help get it off you. But your dog, or maybe Brian Stelter, definitely will. <laughs> if Anna Navarro doesn't beat him to it. Oh. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's blown away when she forgets to fill her backpack with rocks. Co-host of America's Newsroom and the Five, Dana Perino. His observations on our culture give the left an ulcer. Host of Tucker Carlson tonight, Tucker Carlson. She's like the Daytona 500, loud and full of smoke. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And Florida may have the longest coastline, but Tyrus has the longest clothesline. My massive sidekick and the new NWA World Tel Television Champion. So first off, I got to go to you, Dana. I have to apologize because for many years, maybe 10 years, yeah. I have been uh, making fun of you and your silly obsession with dogs. <laughs> yes. You know, whether it was Percy, you know, or um, Jasper. And now I, I realize I'm a hypocrite. I wanted to show you briefly what I've become, and it's worse than you. <laughs> <laughs> Little silly boy. You silly boy. You silly boy. <laughs> there you go. So, so Dana. Yes. I am disgusting. What has happened to me? Is this a cult? It's a little bit of a cult. It's a, it, um, it's a, it's a gift, I believe, from God, uh, dogs, um, for all of us. And if you, once you get it, you get it. I always believe that you kind of secretly like Jasper. Yes. But maybe, I don't know, just maybe. The one thing I had a problem with is when he's on his hind legs, he's taller than me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and me, and me. Um, I, but I, I've always believed, like, you know, at the dog park, at some, New York, and one great thing about New York is that Central Park it does allow dogs in the morning to have fun and run around. And I have a rule, no politics at the dog park. Mm. So if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, what do you think is going to happen in the election? I'm like, oh, you know, sorry, you know, I don't do that here. It's, we just talk about our dogs, and uh, to your point, mm. our worst phrase, uh, it is a great unifier, and it's a good way to start a conversation, and a conversation or something that you can always find a safe space with your dogs. Yeah, very good. Tucker, are any of your dogs political? No, and that's why I like them. <laughs> yes, yes. The beauty of dogs is they have no memory, mm -hmm. none. Yeah. So they hold no grudges, and everything is always thrilling. Everything's the first <laughs> time. My dogs, my oldest is 16, my youngest is a year and a half, and they've eaten dog food every single day. Twice you mean a day your school. dogs? My dogs. Okay. Yeah. And they're thrilled when you give them dog food. Yes. And not one time is like, oh, dog food. Yeah. You know, they're like, what? Do dog food? Are you serious? Yeah. You get dog food? Yeah. And they're, th oh, that's my oldest. That's my youngest. All spaniels. That's Brookie. It's my hunting dog. Anyway, they, yeah, I mean, I, I admire my dogs. They have really beautiful souls. I'm yeah. I'm sorry to say that. I think that. 
Your dog is 16. Our oldest, Meg, is 16. That's incredible, because that's, like, really old for a dog. Yeah, you took good care of her. It's like I can't do the math. It's 7 Pelosi. times 16 is 70 plus 42. That's 112. Sleeps on the bed next to me every night. Wow. Yep. Sleeping with a 112-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes two of us. That's a Paul Pelosi move. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a Paul Pelosi move. You're terrible. All right. But I had to repeat it in case anybody missed it. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Kat, you have a dog, much like mine. In fact, your dog is um, my dog's uncle. uncle. Yes. Yes. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it, it's, yes, it is. Yes. Uh, but also, you have accused my dog of some horrible things <laughs> as of late. You used to love Carl, and now you say that Carl is a bad influence on <laughs> Gus. It's true. This it's... isn't a joke. He, wouldn't, he didn't want Carl to come over because he was being a bad influence on his puppy. <laughs> He was dog. He was... My dog doesn't like smoke cigarettes. <laughs> he was hopping on the furniture. Oh, he was. Ho so was I. <laughs> <laughs> so were you. Yeah, that is true. There was a lot of hopping going on there. But no, but uh, but and, and there is a there is a conflict between you and I mean your dog Carl and Cheens, your cat. Oh, Cheens is always trying to get Carl canceled mm. all the time. <laughs> he keeps. He keeps trying to report him for different crimes, but nothing ever happens. But I just talked to Cheens today, actually, mm -hmm. and now he said he's going to say that Carl was at January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to deal with that when I get home. Carl is a, if, if, if a frat boy was a dog. Yes, he's the frattiest dog ever. He's like, oh, I'm the best. He looked. Cheens just hisses at him all day. He's like, oh, I'm the best. I never did anything wrong. And Cheens just, Cheens is so old and feral and sick, and I love him so much. <laughs> yes, you do. All right, Tyrus, I keep, I've asked you this before. How many pets do you have? I have a zoo. Uh, yeah. So I fit in just fine in Florida. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of exotic animals. And, of course, we have uh, our Yorkie, Sugar, who, who identifies as a hunting German shepherd. Uh, <laughs> and I have the bodies of plenty of birds and moles and squirrels who just thought they could make it. Um, and then I got a, actually I have my Dobermans coming Saturday, so I'm pretty excited, but I have an exotic zoo. You know, like when I was told when I was a kid, you can't go to the zoo, you can't do those things. Well, I just built my own. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got chameleons, turtles, talking about my turtles again, something's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> Monitor lizards, tegus. I got about 500 different species of cichlids, which I breed for fun and don't share, so I have a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, it, and you're seeing some of them right here, but in my chameleon, and those are my turtles that you try to make fun of. I wasn't. That could easily be, and those are my tegus. That's my Te grossly overweight tegus. I obviously need to walk more, but I've been... What's a Working tegu? A tegu is it's a it's a type of uh, monitor lizard, but they're really cool. Very, they're like it's about as smart as a cat. And I have about 42 different species of python, and that actually is my odd couple. See if you look, that's an emerald tree python with a tree frog that got in there, and I assumed it was the tree frog's ass, but it turns out they're BFFs. So <laughs> I took a picture, and I was like, that tree frog is still in there, and they just. They just, that's just all the love and harmony in my stuff. See, if those two can get along, anybody can get along. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.